Hi everybody, I'm Mike Garska with SuccessToolChest.com and FindAMentor.com. Welcome to this week's Help Me Communicate, where I help you become a better communicator in different ways at work. This, this week, I'm going to talk about how to make your meetings effective. I'm going to give you 10 tips to help you keep your meetings effective, short, and sweet so your people see the benefit in them and get some value from those meetings. Have you ever been to a meeting where someone takes it way off topic and, and seems like we didn't get anything done? Of course, we all have. Have you been to a meeting where uh, someone uh, takes it right off track and, and we don't accomplish what was on the agenda because it went too long and everybody had to get back? Yes. So. What I wanna do is give you 10 tips for keeping those meetings short, sweet, and to the point. But first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about why meetings are so important. Um, for the last 15 years, I've been consulting to family businesses, and I've often done business inquiries. And we ask 50 or 60 questions to the entire work group about the effectiveness of the business. And in every business inquiry that we've done, the number one complaint of not only the owners and the managers, but all of the people was effective information and communication flow. People don't get communicated the right information at the right time in the right format always. And meetings are one method of making sure that information and communication flow is effective in your business. That, so that's the first reason, effective information and communication flow so everybody's on the same page. The second important reason for having an effective meeting structure within your business is to take advantage of the masterminding principle. What's the masterminding principle? Well, it was first coined by a guy named Napoleon Hill. And Napoleon Hill was one of the most inspirational and sought, off, sought after writers and speakers in the 1900s. Um, in the early 1900s, Napoleon Hill uh, interviewed hundreds of the world's most influential and most powerful people. And he did that in an effort to write a book about what it is that makes these people successful, what sets them apart from the common folk. And he wrote his first book, Think and Grow Rich, which sold out its entire first printing in two weeks. Since that book was first published in the uh, about 1938, it has gone on to sell a hundred million copies, one of the most uh, purchased uh, self-help type books ever written. Uh, Napoleon Hill went on to write four or five other books. And in every book that he wrote, he wrote a chapter on masterminding because all of the people that he interviewed attributed much of their success to masterminding. And Napoleon Hill defined masterminding as this process. When two or more minds come together, a third invisible intangible force likened to a third mind is created. So when a group of people come together for a collective objective, we get a third force going. If two people come together, you get a third force. If four people come together, you get a fifth force. And quite simply, when two people work towards the same objective separately, they don't achieve it as fast or as thoroughly as they do when they come together and put their minds together and get that third force working for them. So quite simply, mastermind a mastermind group is a team. And the way I see it, every business has different mastermind teams working within it. Uh, the uh, senior VP team is a mastermind team and underneath them, they drive down the different mastermind teams. So your sales department is a mastermind team, your production department is a mastermind team, your accounting department is a mastermind team. And the collective objective, the collective energy of that group is determining the success of that function in the business. That mastermind group is determining part of the business's success. It's very important that ma that mastermind team be aligned, be congruent, be working towards those common objectives. And what you're doing when you're having a department meeting is you're having a masterminding session and you're guiding that mastermind group. So I'm going to assume a couple things as I give you the 10 tips to make your mastermind groups work really well. 
and I'm going to assume that you have a consistent meeting schedule. It's very important that you have a consistent meeting schedule. Uh, some of the master, best mastermind teams that I've been on uh, was a sales mastermind group in my early 20s. And we met every day. And every day at the end of the day, we had a masterminding session. And each salesperson, there was four of us on the team, would go through our entire day, who we talked to, what we talked about, and we would get feedback. We would get feedback on our wins and our challenges. Uh, the other members would say, oh, I talked to that guy and here's how I handled him when he was in my territory. And we grew our learning curves instead of going like this for learning on our own. They went like this because we learned from the rest of the group. And the mastermind team was extremely effective, so effective that in one of Alberta's worst economies in the early 1980s, we grew sales 30% year over year. Uh, one of the companies that I work for now is a work with now into consulting is a construction company and their entire site work group mastermind every morning they have a toolbox talk and that mastermind group talks about productivity and safety they meet every day and they have a short agenda some meetings are five minutes long some minutes meetings are half an hour long depending on what's going on um, so I'm going to assume that you have that consistent schedule. Now, some mastermind groups like an accounting department, a small accounting department at a family business might only have to meet once a month, but they do need to meet on a regular, regular consistent basis. Uh, so have a consistent meeting structure. Um, make sure that your leader is trained to chair meetings. If they're not trained, or if you're not trained and you're a leader, here's your first five tips for conducting an effective meeting uh, today. Uh, the first thing is that I'm going to share is when a new item is comes up in dis, for discussion and it starts to take the meeting off track, stop the meeting. Make a note of the item and uh, defer it either to the next meeting or defer it to a subcommittee committee to explore further and bring a more succinct uh, proposal back to the next general meeting. Uh, the second tip uh, for being a good uh, chairperson in a meeting is to create action items as those new items come up. Uh, as you're discussing new business, create action items. Assign those action items either to a subcommittee or to an individual. And when you do that, ask for a date for completion. Make the person accountable. So create action items. Uh, um, don't allow meetings to go off track. The third item is stop people from interrupting. When somebody interrupts, stop them. Allow the person who's speaking to finish. That's your third tip. Uh, if someone's taking too much airtime, stop them. Ask them to wrap it up and summarize or create an action item and assign that action item to a committee or another individual to explore further before they bring it back to the uh, main mastermind team. Uh, the fifth important item is, as a chairperson is assign somebody to take minutes. Pick the best person in the group to take minutes. And make sure that they record all of the important stuff. Now, why do we take minutes? Uh, in meetings, it's really important to take minutes, and I'll tell you why. Minutes is a form of writing your goals down for each member in that mastermind team. And why is writing goals down so important? Well, throughout the 1900s, all the inspirational writers and speakers talked about the importance of writing down goals, but there was never a study done. So Gail Matthews from Dominican University did a study uh, right around the year 2000, and she put three people into three different groups. The first group of people set goals, but never wrote them down. The second group of people set goals and wrote them down. The third group of group people set goals, wrote them down, and then reported on their progress or made themselves accountable to a colleague or a friend. And what we found was the people who wrote their goals down and reported on their progress achieved far and away more than those that just wrote their goals down. And both groups achieved more than double what those who didn't write their goals down. So it's important to write their goals down and minutes are a form of writing goals down. A bank doesn't give us business alone without seeing their written goals. And their written goals for a business person come in the form of a business plan and a budget and an operations plan. It's a way that the bank makes sure that the business owner is writing their goals down. And if a business owner can't write their goals down, they're not gonna get a loan. Same thing with your mastermind groups, bringing it down to a smaller level when you record minutes 
for action items that give people, uh, get people to commit to dates. You're writing their goals down and you're making them accountable to the rest of the group. And when we do that, we know people achieve their goals. So when you're recording minutes, setting action items, then your group is achieving goals more than they would if they didn't. So the next five tips that I'm going to give you, I'll give you the first five tips. Assign someone to take minutes. Uh, when someone's taking too much air time, ask them to summarize and wrap it up and create an action item. Stop people from interrupting. Create action items. And when a new item comes up and it's going off topic, stop it and defer it to the next meeting or to a subcommittee. Now, your agenda is critical to keeping your meetings short, sweet, and effective. So I'm going to give you uh, five tips for a meeting agenda. And the first tip is following this process in your meetings. The first thing you do in a meeting is review last minutes, last meeting's minutes. And as you review last meeting's minutes, what you're doing is you're getting each person to report back on the action items that they took responsibility for and making them accountable. So the first tip in a consistent agenda is have the first item to review last minutes, uh, last meeting's minutes to keep people accountable. The second item on your agenda, uh, tip two, is to uh, go over new business. And during the discussion, uh, create action items as that new business gets discussed and assign those action items to either a subcommittee or an individual, ask for a date of completion, and then move on to the next item. So uh, your, 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 is your process for an agenda is review minutes, then you do new, new business, then the third item on your agenda should be customer complaints because we want to know what things we need to improve as a group. Now, you might say that accounting department doesn't have customers. I say BS. Every individual in a company has a customer. And sometimes those customers are internal customers. So an accounting department's customers are the sales department and the production department and the management team. And they're responsible for giving accurate numbers and timely reports so that those people can adjust and make adjustments to what they're doing and make their business or their department work better. So everybody's got a customer. Um, and we want to talk about customer complaints. Uh, so if you're in an accounting department, sales department complained that the uh, re last report wasn't on time. That's a complaint. What are we going to do? What procedure are we going to put into place so that doesn't happen again? So as you're discussing complaints, you create action items and you create new procedures and new policies for the company to eliminate the possibility of those complaints happening again. The fourth item on your agenda should be customer compliments. And why do we have customer compliments? Because we know that positive affirmation helps people achieve their goals, keeps them interested and motivated and excited to keep working. Um, back in the 90s, when I owned cellular phone companies, we brought in a group to teach us on how to uh, provide corrective measures to employees. And the general philosophy that they gave us was to use what we called the shit sandwich to give feedback. So if somebody's made a mistake, the first thing you do is you bring them into the office, you have a one-on-one -on -one discussion, you don't discuss it around uh, the group necessarily, sometimes you do, but mostly if you're correcting an individual, you do it separately and privately. Um, unless you've got consensus that it's okay to correct people in front of a group. Without that consensus, you do it privately. But uh, the shit sandwich works like this, uh, Charlie. You know, you're here on time every day. And we really appreciate that. That's great. That sets the standard for the company. But what I notice, you're here on time and your first half hour is bullshitting with all the people. And we lose that half hour of productivity. And so I want you to take and reduce that half hour of BS down to five minutes of BS. I understand that you need to connect with everybody and get your day going. But it's important that you be productive and set that pace. Now, your work is thorough, your work is very good, we just want you to fine tune that thing. So what I did in that case is I told him the good thing, he's there on time every day, the bad thing, he takes too much time to initiate for the day, and the good thing is that his work's effective. So that's your sip sandwich, and that's meant to get people motivated. But we found, uh, so that's a two to one positive affirmation to a corrective measure. What we found since the turn of the century is that formula is not enough. 
And we now know that, in fact, the proper formula for correct, after you've corrected somebody, to get them inspired and motivated to keep moving is actually seven to one. And that's very difficult to give somebody seven positive affirmations. And you don't want to actually do it all at once. Um, when I'm coaching business managers and leaders, I coach them to do a minimum of four to one, try to get it to seven. So whenever you've corrected a person uh, for their mistake, a user shit sandwich, that gives them two positives and a negative. And then, for example, with the construction company, uh, if the superintendent has corrected somebody on the work team, then what I encourage them to do is to inform the foreman group, the sub-leaders, that this person has been corrected. And so ask the foreman group anytime, because the superintendent's not on site all day long, but the foreman are, anytime you notice Charlie doing good work, give him a pat on the back. We've got to give him at least four or five more positive affirmations this week because he screwed up and we want him to fix that screw up and be still be motivated. So the formula is actually four to seven to one when you've corrected somebody. Now, when you're going through customer compliments, that's an opportunity to give somebody and give the team a pat on the back, which inspires them to work harder. So make customer compliments part of your agenda. The last item on your agenda, so I've given you five items for your agenda. One is review minutes, two is do new business, three is customer complaints, four is customer compliments, and the fifth item, and you try and keep your meetings as short as possible, is do a quick round table, okay, anything else, a quick round table for everybody participating in the meeting, anybody else, uh, have, do you have anything else that needs to be brought up that we can create an action item or move to the next agenda? And as you go through the round table, encourage every person that speaks to compliment somebody on the team and boost your positive affirmations. Very, very important. So uh, close the meeting with a round table, include in the round table that everybody gives a compliment. Uh, do your customer compliments, do your customer complaints, do your new business and review your minutes. Now, at the end of every meeting, the person who looks after the minutes, one final suggestion here about minutes, is make sure that everybody gets a copy of the minutes of the meeting and uh, the people that miss the meeting that are normally part of the mastermind team, make sure they get a copy of the minutes as well. Every once in a while, you've got absentee members that can't make it to a meeting for one reason or the other. Make sure they get a copy of the minutes. And the person who's sending out the minutes, uh, the last, uh, make sure that in the, in the email that sends out all the minutes that they ask the participants that were at the meeting that if I've made a misinterpretation of something in the minutes or miss something in the minutes, please reply all and add that to the minutes. So if, if the person taking the minutes actually missed something on the reply alls, everybody will find out what's being missed. And so everybody's fully informed. They have the information, they have the action items, they're accountable to each other when you use this system. So as a leader, let's do a quick review. Uh, when the meeting goes off topic, stop, defer it to a subcommittee or to the next meeting. Create action items, assign them and ask for a data completion. Uh, stop people from interrupting and ask them to wait until the next person is finished. When someone is going, uh, taking too much airtime, ask them, stop them and ask them to wrap it up and summarize and either create an action item or move on and assign someone to take minutes. And when those minutes are completed, uh, uh, clean them up after the meeting, send them out to everybody and ask people to reply all uh, if they notice any mistakes in the minutes. Uh, your agenda, your, your five items for an agenda. Review your minutes, talk about new business, do your customer co complaints, do your customer compliments, then do your round table. And in your round table, make sure that everybody gets on the team uh, is, is giving someone a compliment. And if you follow that format, your mastermind teams will start to hit on all cylinders and achieve their objectives quicker and faster than they would if they didn't make themselves accountable to each other. And they will see the value in the minutes because they'll see progress. They'll see things going on. Uh, they'll see that there's an effort to keep the meeting short and sweet and to the point. And so when you follow those formats, your teams will do better. Thank you for watching Help Me Communicate this Wednesday. Um, I'm going to encourage you to like our Facebook page and follow us. Um, check out successtoolchess.com blog. 
every Wednesday. Uh, all, the, all the Wednesday Help Me Communicate sessions are posted on our blog there. You can watch the series, uh, go back. There's different tips on different things. Uh, check out that blog. Uh, you can download our free uh, HIP effective awareness communications tool which explains how the communications process works and gives you uh, a, a tool to navigate those sensitive conversations that's a free download uh, if you really want to become a good communicator take our contact communications and masterminding program uh, until the end of the year it's only $89 that price will be going up to $199 take advantage of that price uh, learn the seven step contact format for navigating and adjusting in those sensitive and crucial conversations. Um, I hope you enjoyed Help Me Communicate today. Don't forget to like our page and follow us uh, on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, check out findamentor.com. We're always looking for mentors. Um, it's a free service for mentors and for mentees. Uh, there's over 1,900 categories where you can be a mentor in, in that aspect of life that you're really good at. There's over 1,900 categories where you can find a mentor in that aspect of life that you want to expand your knowledge and, and your skills in. Uh, so check out findamentor.com. Tell your friends. Go out and make it an awesome day. Thank you for watching. Help me communicate this Wednesday. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.